Okay, here we are. We are live. Uh, and it is, can you believe it or not, we have only a couple days until October. I know, it's crazy. I, I feel like it's still like June. I know, my brain is not ready for this. I mean, I'm very ready not for fall, wrong, but yeah. not for yeah. end of the year. I mean, I'm always ready for fall. I mean, clearly, yeah. I'm like all fall. I yeah. love fall, but like, where did the summer go? I know. Really, where did the summer go? Crazy. Mm. But if you're joining us here live or in replay, this is uh, our September book club uh, read discussion of Jennifer Chivarini's. Is that how you say it? <laughs> I think it's Chivarini, but I'm not sure. 100%. Uh, her, uh, the spy mistress, is what we'll be discussing this evening. Um, so if you are watching this in replay, make sure you post in the comments any responses that you'd like um, to add to the discussion. We always look back at those, so we appreciate that. Um, if you are new to the book club here at Double Book Co., um, we read one book per month except for the month of December, um, and you can join at any time. There's no, you know, rhyme or reason, really. You don't have to read all of the books. Some of us DNF these books. Um, so that's obviously part of it as well. Um, and we do additionally have a Voxer group. Uh, Voxer is like a, a walkie-talkie app um, that does text and talk. So if you're interested in joining that, all you have to do is let myself or Laura know what your Voxer handle is. Um, and then we just pop you into the group. So you won't see any of the past messages, but you'll see uh, the newest messages. I see we have a uh, cool gamer has joined us. Thank you Hello. for joining. So nice to see you again. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're going to kind of jump right on into it. Um, I know before that, though, we want to uh, remind everybody oh. of what the um, read is for October. So we always run a poll um, in our community section of Double Book Co. here on YouTube, um, and it will let everybody vote on um, one of three books. Um, and then Laura and I do not vote. And Laura, you have the results from that. Mm -hmm. So for October, I mean, when we, when we can, we always try to tie it in with another larger booktube read or a history month if we can. Um, October spooky season, it's Victober. Those are the two big ones, I really think. So we picked things that are gothic or witchy or some combination of them. Um, so the winner by a pretty decent landslide, I think it was over 50% or something like that. I don't yeah. remember amount. But the winner is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. Here's the cover. And it is apparently the start to a series now. The second book just came out recently or is coming out next week, something like that. So here we go. It's about a woman who pretends to be a witch, I think, to just get... Uh, she's No, she's got magic, but she pretends to be a witch online, like a fake witch, and then someone hires her to teach little witches how to become witches. So she goes to this little house and I don't know, romance, children, teaching, you know, I don't know, but it should be fun. So here we go. Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. Awesome. And I think everything is on also Libby and or not Hulu. What's the other one? Hoopla. Thank you, Hoopla. I think it's on all of them. How do you spell that? Sangu? You said Sangu? Yeah. S-A-N-G-U is her first name. And last name is Mandana. Like bandana, M-A-N-D-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. I feel like I did look this up, and now that I'm trying, it's not going to. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, so here's an ebook from that same author. So I'm going to look them up real quick. There we go. Um, I don't see it on Hoopla. It it's was author. four. What's that? It was there before. I think when the first. I know. I feel like I thought I saw it on there yeah. too. Because I was like, oh, yay, I'll be able to read this. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm looking at this author, it's not in here. Mm -hmm. Let me try to do it by the title. Yeah. Um, what are the first three words? The very secret. Okay. Um, yeah. 
fairy secret. Because I always, whenever we have books, I always, I always try to look first. Yeah. And I checked, like, uh, yeah. it must have been a month ago then. I thought it was earlier. I, my timing is all screwed up. But it's out there. Yeah. I don't think it's on Hoopla anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think it is. And I feel like I saw it on there because I was like, yes, I thought I saw it on both ebook mm -hmm. and the audio. So yep. I don't know, but I don't see it now. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll try again later and see if it's on there again. Because I feel like sometimes when you're looking for something and it's not on there, like you go back a week later and all of a sudden it's on there. So mm -hmm. who knows? But obviously you can get it in other places as well. So that is the book for October. Should be fun. Something different. I know last yeah. year for October we, oh no, my computer's starting to be a jerk. Oh. This is not good. <sighs> okay. Let me try to get on my phone. This is terrible, you guys. <laughs> Like, why can't anything ever be good? Can you still hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn my camera off so no one gets sick. <laughs> okay, so getting into, let's kind of just, while I'm readjusting here. Um, so like it, like we said, we are reading, we read um, Jennifer Chivarini's The Spy Mistress, which was a Civil War uh, novel. So it, it was, but it's based on a true person, um, mm -hmm. which I did not know going into the read. Um, I per personally, I thought it was going to be a romance, like some kind of romantic oh. kind of something or other. And no, oh. there wasn't anything like every time there was a new man that was introduced, I was like, oh, maybe this is going to be the person that she <laughs> falls in love with. Not the case. No. Um, but, uh, yeah, so Civil War, based on a true person. Um, and with that being said, you know, reading the book during the month, Laura, I know you and I kind of already discussed a little bit throughout while we were reading it. But what uh, what are your thoughts of the book? Like, if you were to rate it one out of five, what um, would you rate this read? I feel bad about this, but I'm going to give it a two. I feel like I want to give it a two and a half because she's a Wisconsin author. <laughs> but that seems like not a reason to give a half star bump. I don't know. Um, yeah, I would give it two stars. So um, this was, this title was one of my picks. Um, and by that, I had, oh. I know. Just I know. <laughs> okay, I think I fixed it. Okay, and um, and by that I mean we had two picks ready from from that were submitted from you guys from people that were in our book club, and then we had a third one to kind of round it out that would go between. So I thought I would, we try something with Civil War since one of the other picks was The Yellow Wife by Sue. I think it's Sudika something other i forget the author's last name but i thought oh this should be good she's a wisconsin person she's written a ton of books like this sounds interesting like historical fiction based on a real person all right like this sounds like a nice compliment um so sorry um for putting it in but i i don't know for a lot was just kind of off for me the pacing was really weird for me the um personage shifting all the time like that really threw me um the amount and then corresponding lack of detail for everything was just like either way 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 too much or nothing there was no happy medium at all i felt um i uh it felt more like someone was like someone was trying to write uh, like a biography of this person, of this woman, but then decided to fictionalize it randomly. And it doesn't really read like a fictional story. Like there was really no tension for me at any point in reading this book. And it's set in Richmond in the Civil War. Like this is a big deal. It's, a lot of stuff happens here, you know? 
and I never felt worried about people or I just was like, oh, okay. I mean, I, it felt very flat. And um, also I know a little about the civil war, not a ton, but I know a little, I've taken a class or two on it. And I, of course, have seen the Ken Burns documentary, like any good nineties person. Um, and I, I'm interested in history, but this was like, way too much detail of too many specific things that meant nothing to me. Also, I feel like a huge missed opportunity in here would be to include a map or multiple maps. Like, I don't know what Richmond looks like or what it looked like then. Mm -hmm. but how they described walking around the streets meant nothing to me. Um, I would have enjoyed seeing a map of what this like underground railroad situation essentially looked like, where there were houses, where there were safe places, whatever. I would have appreciated an overview of like battles of the Civil War, like where they were fought around in and around Richmond. I mean, I, there was nothing to ground me in the place at all. It was just, here's a woman, and this is written in a very, and generals, but don't, they're not really important. Well, I think you're frozen there. Hello, hello. Am I frozen? Are you frozen? Are you both frozen? <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm not sure who's frozen. We both might be frozen, but... All right. You there? <laughs> Uh-oh. You were there, and now you're not. Oh, boy. Are you there? Yeah, literally. I can't go look at my router. It is right there. This is my router. <laughs> You know, we just can't win. We just can't win with this technology because so we're just I'm disappointed by this book. I am bummed about this book because this could have been good, if not great. I yeah. think easily. So right. yeah. What about you? Yeah, I I agree with everything you just said. I am giving it a whopping two stars, and I think that is is uh pretty generous but i can't look past the fact that it, it still is good writing i mean yeah the writing is fine mm -hmm. but i think the biggest thing that i agree with is like it was just so flat i just i was waiting for the the tension the climax that something mm -hmm. but it just was it was like an account of this person's life but fictional ish mm -hmm. like I, like I said in, in the beginning, I did not know this was, was based on a real person because mm -hmm. I'm a weirdo and I don't really read the back of books. Even when we read them to everyone here to like pick, I'm not really listening. I'm just kind of like making sure that the, the clips are up and, you know, because I'm not going to vote on it anyways. I'm going to read what anybody picks. So I don't really pay attention. And if I do, I don't remember it by the time I pick it up to read it. And I don't read the back. So I didn't even know this was based on a real person until my audiobook, because I had wet hands because I was doing dishes, went to the next part, which was like, I don't know about the author or, or whatever it was or historical context. And it started saying all that. And I was like, oh, I'm like, well, that makes a little bit more sense now because, and I told you this before we went live, but I totally thought this was going to be like some kind of romantic something <laughs> in it, like that. Yeah. She falls in love with like a Confederate officer, and then because she's a you know loyalist, and you know, like I just I thought it was gonna be so much more <laughs> than what it was, mm -hmm. and it just wasn't like anytime a man came on came into the scene, I was like, oh, maybe this is someone that she is gonna fall in love with. And I don't know why I thought that way, but it just felt like that was gonna be what it was gonna be about, and it just wasn't, which is fine. But then there's got to be something else. There was no, I just, I never felt like anything bad was going to happen. And to me, even with that, and even though it's a, like a based on a true story, like nothing bad ever happened to her really right. until after the war, when it all came out that she was, you know, kind of a union spy that she, you know, she never regained her wealth. You know, she spent a lot of money, you know, helping. 
she struggled with keeping that postmaster position after Grant wasn't the president anymore. So, like, it, I just never, I never felt like anything was, like, really hanging in the balance for her. Like, she was just always, like, Johnny on the spot. Like, here's this, and, oh, come on in for for something to eat. And, I mean, there was that one scene where she couldn't get cornmeal. And, it, but that was, like, one time. So I feel like it was, I don't know if it was exaggerated or if it was real, but like kind of like almost as if she's sitting up in her ivory tower helping everybody. Like that's kind of how I felt. And I don't know if it's just because of the way I was paying attention because I listened to it on audio, but I was just like, okay, like I don't get it. And to be fair in reading the book, she doesn't even become a spy until you are in to the book 49%. Yeah, say it's halfway. It's 49% because I looked. I, I literally, as soon as the moment hit where she was like actually like going to be a spy, I looked at my, my phone to see what percentage of the book it was, and it was 49%. And I was like, are you serious? Like, that was a lot. It mm-hmm. was a lot. And, and that first 49%, is the same thing over and over and over again. She goes to the jail. She brings them stuff. She goes home. She goes to the jail. She brings them stuff. She goes home. She goes to the jail. I mean, it was just the same thing over and over and over and over again. And I'm just like, when when does she become a spy? Mm -hmm. Because it's called the spy mistress. Like, what... What is she doing that's helping the union? Because this doesn't make any sense to me. Like, she's just, like, kind of moving stuff around, but not really, like, and you don't really know what she's doing. It's It was so boring. And I think boring is the word for the whole book. It was so boring. And now, I've read other books that are fictional accounts of real events, and they have so much more intrigue than this one had. And it makes me think, like, how do certain books get published like who is who's reading this book and going that was great like and no offense if anyone does because that's the way you read a book but tell me why was this great why was this so great if it was great to you because to me I was just like what are we reading this what is where are we getting to and uh to kind of one of your questions Laura that you brought up while you're kind of talking on the side you know as a reader, how much of the Civil War history do we know and how does that affect our reading? Mm-hmm. So I don't have it in a, in a banner or anything, but we'll kind of talk about that next. You know, like you and I, for me, when I was in high school, I, I did a lot of history classes because I thought I was going to be a history teacher. So I learned a lot about the Civil War. I learned a lot about artillery. I learned a lot about you know, kind of what it meant to be a soldier as far as the the walking, the the starvation, a lot of the, the stressors that weren't necessarily the actual battles. Um, and then on the flip side of that, I also was taking a lot of English classes in college and in a lot of American literature, you have Civil War time fiction as well, like Stephen Crane's um, The Red Badge of Courage, which is one of my favorite books. And that tells a tale of a soldier, a young man who is in the Civil War, who ends up being a deserter, I believe. It's been a long time since I've read it. And in all of all of that knowledge, the only thing that was keeping me going in this book is that the chapter titles had dates and I knew I only had so many more years left before they had to finish this book. Mm-hmm. That was the only thing that was like, I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, like you said, where's the map? Where, mm-hmm. where, where are you helping the reader understanding the geography of where these people are, how far they have to go, you know? And especially Richmond, like you said, especially Richmond, because like how far from the jail to her home do these people have to like right. get to, Right. you know, that was the big thing, you know, they're trying to escape and get 
you know, lodging in her home. How far is that? Like, how far do they have to travel? And this is 18, you know, uh, what are we, what was it? 40? No. Now I'm losing track. 60s, 62, 63, 64. Yeah. Five. Cause I'm, yeah. Cause like 65, you know, it has to be over. That's it. There's no more time. Um, but like back then, you know, were there that many people paying attention? I don't know. Like, so I, I had a hard, hard time. Yeah. I had a hard time with this one. And like, I had forgotten just because I've never been there personally myself, but like, I forgot that Richmond was near a body of water of any kind. And it's all of a sudden it's like, oh, ships in the bay. And I was like, oh, oh, Richmond's by water. Mm -hmm. This was like 30% into the book or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing. <laughs> um, so I don't remember what name because I could never keep any dude's name straight except for a select few. And even then it took me a little dialogue to be like, oh yeah, this person, you know. Um, but there was somebody, she was trying to help escape. And it was like literally three pages of the book about like, okay, we're going to do this thing. You have to follow this person here. You do this thing and you wait till this thing and you're quiet for 20 minutes and then you blah, blah, blah. It was all this detailed thing. And I thought, oh, okay, there's going to be like an escape attempt, right? And then, so it ends up, to, she's like, okay, so, you know, do you have everything you need? Yes. The next paragraph is, um, so three months later, we heard that he made it safely home to, like, New York. It was, like, two sentences later, and he was gone from the book forever. There was nothing about how he made it or how he crossed the street or when he gets to her house or nothing. It was just like, oh, yeah, and I, we found out later that he's fine. And it's like, uh, why, yeah. why bring it up? Why? What's the point? Yeah. I think that's. But I think you're referring to when she helps the that one doctor escape, and then he ends up with the um, Mr. Howard or or whoever. Yeah, I I can't keep any names straight either. And they did that. Yeah, so they're they're in the surgery, and she was telling him the plan, and then basically she goes home and like waits it out, and she's like, "Well, I hope he like right now he should be he should be playing dead." And right. then you're like, "Really? We're gonna miss all of the action?" Like. And then they just show up and she's like, yay. And then oh, that was a different person. There were oh. things that were like that. We're like, all um, these build up. it was so repetitive that I don't even remember. Yeah. Yeah. But I know what you mean. That one too. I forgot. I was like, oh yeah, that one. And then there was a guy she did help escape who like finally with Mr. E like Ely or whatever his name is, like I got this guy to get home, like to, to her house to minister him. Like, but like, I, I just, all of it was just really, really, uh, it just seemed all over the place. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. It felt like it was just like a relaying of, of events. Yeah. No way. Like you said, like it just, there was no, there was just no depth. There was no real. I don't know. When I saw, when I read something that's fictional, and I know fictional, I don't like look at fictional as fake. I feel like fictional just is more imaginative, you know, because it can right. be based on real events with real people and, and real things and just, you know, dramatized a little bit. And that's super fun. But because it's fiction and it's not like a biography, you got to make it more fun. You got to make it more interesting. You got to put some kind of tension in there. Like, never once was she caught for anything. And even when she was, she was, like, never really was close to getting anything. Like, it just, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever happened to, okay, so I started reading this. I read 30 or 40%, and then I switched to the audio, and then... I would read occasionally. Oh, there's two points I want to make. Okay, so Laura, keep continue. Okay, so so I was going back and forth at the end with reading and audio. And whatever happened to the guy with a tobacco stained beard who was watching her house off and on for like the first 60% of the book, whatever happened to him? Like I fell asleep for 10 minutes. And I think I back tried to, but like he's just gone. Yeah, he just was like wasn't watching her house anymore. Okay. But she never mentions it. 
Cool. Um, and the other thing that I noticed that really confused me for a little while is that the audiobook is not the complete book. It's slightly abridged because when I was trying to find places to like see, okay, chapter 14, what were the dates on here? Because I never remember the dates when they said them on the audiobook, if they did say them. So I was trying to find them and I'm like reading along and it's like a paragraph is missing or three sentences of a conversation is missing. And then like a, a little like background character is missing from like a sentence. And then another paragraph is missing. It doesn't really affect anything at all. But it's really weird. What's the point of that? Like, I, I don't understand I that. Know. I only listen to the audio, so I wouldn't even, it would make no difference to me. Right. And the stuff that was so, like taken away wouldn't have done anything either way. But this whole book is kind of like that. Like, I feel like the whole thing is kind of a who cares? And why take all these little bits from like all these chapters when not, nothing matters, anyways? Like, I just, it was just the oddest thing. I thought, why? Yeah. Right. I need someone to explain that to me. Because that really kind of made me mad. Like, this is, it should say abridged. Because technically, it's abridged. If you're missing right. lines and paragraphs and things, but it's not. But then why? Ha I just, um, irritating. I am curious about Elizabeth. I would like to learn more about her. Um, yeah. I would, but like I was saying, I would rather read it as a biography. Me too. Because if it's fictional, then I want it to be more than just the relaying of events. Right. I don't, I would rather just read the, the biography. Because it makes me think of um, the, uh, book called, uh, gosh, what's it called? Um, the Book Woman of Troublesome Creek. Mm -hmm. Now, this is ba this woman. It's not just her, but it's this time and the pack horse librarians and all that, and the blue people of the Appalachian Mountains or whatever, all based on that. But it's a fictional story, and it's so packed full of just um, amazing storytelling but it's all it's based on real people it's based on real events it's it's all all true things that happened there but the author i think it's like kim something kim michelle peterson or something like that i that's probably completely wrong but that's what's coming to mind mm -hmm. um it's so it's such a good story that i wonder like you're doing the same thing here with this story and you know, you're using the time a real person and the, the things that they did. Why couldn't you, if you're going to do a fictional book, why don't you do something more powerful, more interesting? Like don't just put the events all together and what you think happened and maybe the people that she would have encountered and, like, it just was boring. It was so boring. Yeah. I mean, she could have been a spy by 25% easily. And that would have left the last three quarters of the book, the bulk of the book, to ramp up all the tension and, like, what's happening here. And trying, like, how she, like, got different messages in and out. And, like, it, the tension could have been built up in a whole different way. Another thing that confused me, maybe this confused you, too, is when, like, they would take... Um, someone's like mansion or home or an existing factory and then turn that into a jail, but they would still call it like the same last name. And so it would be like the so-and-so jail or like castles, whatever, but it was really a jail now for somebody, but it still had this family name that they still talked about the book. The characters were still there. So half the time when they were talking about like castle so-and-so or like, the tobacco factory that became whatever the heck it was called. I forget. I was like, wait, is this a prison or is this someone's house or she's going to that confused the crap out of me. And I thought, why this shouldn't be this confusing. This shouldn't mm -hmm. be this confusing. Not that it mattered necessarily either because it, it meant nothing to me in terms of the city or where she was going or how long it took or what was close to what none of that mattered because it, it didn't matter here. So why should I care? 
but still it was just like i don't is this a jail i'm just assuming everything's a jail now until someone says oh they had a dance and i know it's not a jail like i just was so confused i just didn't i just i was getting angry i almost didn't care i was like really i just could you help someone out like <laughs> not everybody yeah. spent time researching this book like you did we don't know the stuff right. like uh, it's frustrating yeah. I think a lot of the times when I read audiobooks, it's hard when it's stuff like this where there are so many people and places and names because I just, you just keep going and those little nuances or those little things are just kind of lost in the shuffle because it's, I can't visually see it. So maybe it confused me, but yeah, I mean, from what I understood, it, it just that they were just like keeping everybody, which was why it was so easy for a lot of them to escape mm -hmm. because they weren't real jail. You know, they weren't real jails and whatnot. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot. I mean, and character wise, I mean, so we do get to know Lizzie mm -hmm. quite well because she is the main character we see her point of view um she's really the only speaker in the uh book i feel like in the first like quarter of the book it felt more like you're going to see more of her mother and um her best friend the eliza or whatever i feel like everyone had the same name by the way yes. um and too. You, and then all of a sudden it just all fell apart and it was just her. Like Eliza didn't show up again until the end where she was just like, oh, he can't arrest you. So if he arrests you, he has to arrest me. And I was like, where have you been? Mm -hmm. I thought you were like gone. <laughs> like, I didn't even know you were still in this book. Yeah. Um, and like, I felt bad about Mary, the sister-in-law, like. I didn't. That I did. Whole situation was kind of like, oh wow, but you didn't see any of it. It was just like all of a sudden when it happened, then you're like, now the girls are back, and you're like, oh, okay, and right. yeah, it was just, I don't know. I didn't feel like I was reading a fictional story. I just feel like I was reading like a timeline. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's really true. It just felt like a here's an order of events. And here's mm -hmm. a, a person to associate with it so you can make a narrative out of it, but not really. Mm -hmm. But here, yeah. here you go. I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> I mean, even looking at, so oftentimes when we prepare for these, I look up discussion questions. And even the discussion questions to me are, I feel just very, like, lazy questions mm -hmm. that I wouldn't really ask anyone above eighth grade level <laughs> but like the only questions I found literally one says like from the opening pages of the novel it is clear that Lizzie supports the union does her dedication to caught to the cause ever waver what does her perseverance tell you about her character um that she's a loyalist like that's the answer she's a loyalist right. like i don't understand what <laughs> what yeah. is that question even asking i know like, i know she is a spinster mm -hmm. she has nothing to lose mm -hmm. because she's a wealthy person mm -hmm. who you've already indoctrined the fact that you are well to do mm -hmm. and people should listen to you and yada 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 and you have this idea in your head that you believe in and it's a good one i'm not saying it's bad because she really believed that you know black people should be freed and they should not be slaves um and she did not want to see her country fall to the hands of these crazy confederates which god bless her soul because i can't even imagine what our united states of america would be like if that had gone a different way but like what does it what does her perseverance tell you about her character that she's she just she's a loyalist she's right she she, she has something to work towards she's tough like she like yep she means what she thinks and like she'll back it up okay yeah that's not, 
<laughs> question. I, I know what you mean. Like I looked stuff up too when I first when we this book was what well, one or whatever. I was looking up discussion questions. I'm like these are lame. Like mm -hmm. I. It's just basically, did you read the book? What did you think of certain things that happened in the book? That's all it was. It wasn't anything mm -hmm. discussion-y that I found. I thought, well, mm -hmm. I'll try and look later. And I didn't look later. So I thought, I, I don't know. Yeah. What, are I, the Van, yeah, what are the Van Loo's relationships with their servants like? How do they, how do the people work for the Van Loo's see them? Mm -hmm. uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> they're nice and they like each other yeah they treat them with respect like they should right. and like equals mm -hmm. and the people who work for them see them as people who care and mm -hmm. really they just want to stay there because if all goes well they know they're gonna be treated right on the other end you know right. like mm -hmm. but I mean, they still, they still employed black people. Like they still, I mean, were they free? Did they, she still had to buy Louisa, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was, you know, <laughs> and thank, you know, she did write in that she did felt, felt awkward having to buy her right? because she didn't feel like people should have to be bought, you know? Um, but unfortunately that's the world that they lived in in that moment right. so she did it anyways um but i mean even you know there was a conversation when they had learned that lincoln had set forth the emancipation proclamation stating that all slaves even in confederate states should or would be free and they even said right right then and we know it to be true you know juneteenth is 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 when certain slaves in I believe Texas were finally notified, you know, later, but yeah. it's true, like they're in, in the, in the structure of the United States that was at the time, obviously no one had a phone that could, you know, like there was none of this like communication happening to have that, you know, it, it wasn't going to just like all of a sudden everyone knew they were free and, you know, go on their merry way. And even if they did, it's not like that's a switch flipped. Mm -hmm. And I feel like people thought that that was what was going to happen. And obviously now in the country today, we know that this is something that has not been properly processed mm -hmm. since the first slave became a slave. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's ridiculous how slowly civil rights has yeah. co be become anything. And, and that's two, two white women discussing this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, what do we know about the, you know, way things have come forth. Like, obviously we know what's in a history book, but we don't know how it actually feels. Mm -hmm. And obviously we live in the North. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, in at least where I live, it's very, uh, it's diverse, but it's not at the same time where you live. It's a little bit more, mm -hmm. but it's how far we've come is not very far. Right. It's getting better, but you say that every year, you know, but when is it going to be better? Mm -hmm. I know. Get off that soapbox for now. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, just going back to the book, like I said, I don't think that the writing was poor. I don't think the writing was poor. I think you can tell that there is a lot of research put into this there's a lot of thought put into this and I think the writing was just fine I just feel like it was extremely slow paced and it was extremely flat like it was so flat the only thing that wasn't flat was like the character Lizzie like I feel like you really did get to know her you got to know what kind of person she was and you know, her feelings about what was happening. You really understood, you know, her loyalty to the union um, and her loyalty to her friends and family. But other than that, this, the whole, like, it was like name dropping and like place dropping. And it just was 
just too much. And I had to keep thinking like who was in charge at the time. And when they would like, she would mention different names. I'm like, okay, okay. And then, you know, but other than that, I'm like, this is the most, if I was not reading this for a book club, I would have DNF'd it at like 25%. Me too. And I don't DNF many books, but this is this would have been a DNF. And like I said, if I wasn't reading it for a book club, like there's no way I would have finished this book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. I mean, I think I'm a little better about DNFing than you are, but even still, like I, it was just so blah. And I would read and read or listen and listen on like two times speed. And I'm like, okay, I've listened for like an hour on two times. Like, that's going to get me somewhere. And it was like 50 pages or something. And I was like, what? What? I don't, what? How is this book so long? It's 350 pages. That's not a long book. That's an average like novel, you know, like 350 is normal. Why did this take me so many hours of like really legitimate trying to pay attention and really concentrating on reading. And even still half the time I was wandering off. I'm like, Oh, I forgot to get lettuce. I mean, I just, I could mm -hmm. not keep my brain on this book. And I was really, really trying that. This is just not, I, I don't know. Like, so I was very happy for the two weeks. When I didn't read this at all. When I was just watching TV shows, <laughs> I was like, that's fine. These are all so good. Like I'm entertained. It's really good. I'm into this. And I didn't want to get back to this quite frankly, because I just thought, mm -hmm. what is the point? It's just dates and name dropping. I just mm -hmm. didn't care. And like, yeah, we do care about Lizzie and we do get to know her the best out of anyone, but it's not like you get to know her really intimate thoughts. It's all just backing up the cause or like how she thinks like the whole idea of slavery is wrong. Like that's all fits her character, but like we never know about like any heartbreak she really had. It was mentioned like once or twice at the very beginning that she had a fiance yeah. or something or a promised person, yeah. someone. Yeah. That was it. There's never any mention about her feelings about being single forever. Or, you know, she mentions how she would have loved to have kids a couple of times, but that's as far as it goes. Not like how it really affected her. Or it was, you know, she, I know she loves her nieces, but like there was no depth to even those things. It was just still a surface. Like, yeah, we're going to know her, but it's all just very two dimensional. You know, it just felt like, yes, this, like the character you think she is exactly who she thinks she is. And that that's it. Like it's the kitty into the pool the whole way through. There's never any deep end at all, you know? Right. Which could have been very easily. This could have been such a tension -y book. Like, without focusing necessarily on particular people that you're busting out or trying to get out or whatever, it could have been so much more, it felt like dangerous and you could have focused on creeping around at night more. And like, it just it's such a missed opportunity in so many ways. Yeah. I, I know I keep saying this too, but it's really frustrating. <laughs> I'm really frustrated by it this. It is. And <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to think if I've read any other, fictionalized civil war books that would be like comparable to this. And I can't think of any, like I said in their last uh, discussion, I feel like world war two really has like the historical fiction genre, like hunkered in. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I have read any other historical fiction that were surrounded by the civil war. Um, I can't think of that I have. Have you? Can you yeah, think of any? I, uh, I, so I took a class um, probably like a year or two after college. So this is like 20 years ago now. I took like a long weekend course on the Civil War and like Wisconsin's role in the Civil War specifically. Um, so I was like, this sounds really interesting. And it was like all major, major Civil War nerds who knew could list off everything. Like they're a dude talking about like baseball stats, you know, it was all those people. And then it was me. I was the youngest by like 30 years minimum. And I had like just very basic knowledge. Like I think most people who went to college and whatever read stuff would have like nothing big. So I got a real hardcore like lesson that weekend and they recommended books to read afterwards, fictional and nonfiction. And I did read some of them. None of them were that great. And a lot of them were very dry fiction and nonfiction were very dry. So I read stuff then. And then several years ago, maybe seven or eight years ago, maybe even more, I don't know. Um, okay. So one of the books that we was on the list for this month um, 
Balm by Dolan Perkins Valdez. Her first book was called Wench, and that came out five or six years prior to Balm came out. And Wench was set in, I think, Ohio around the Civil War, and we follow our main character, who is a Black woman who was born freed. But because she's in Ohio and the fighting goes back and forth and stuff, there's she's trying to like help her friends and family that live in the South. And she ends up having to move closer to like the line essentially. So that was a lot of tension. We really get to know her. Like you never know what's going to happen to her or anybody else. That was great. And that wasn't based on anybody as far as I know. Um, I've also read our parts of that. I think it was a trilogy that became like a longer series, but um, it's written by a man. It's got like titles you would know. And anyways, I've read parts of those books as well. And those were really interesting, but I didn't read it from the start. You know, I thought I'm not going to do it. So it's been sporadic reading off and on. Um, one of my friends in college was a history major. And like, I, so I learned about stuff from them too. So yeah, there's stuff here. And there's stuff that I have read in the not too distant past about the Civil War, fiction and nonfiction. And it's just none of it is like this. I mean, it's so confusing. I feel like I'm in a rant. I'm sorry. I just, it's so frustrating. It is so frustrating because I care about people in all these books. Also, Andersonville. I am super interested in Andersonville, just in general, everything about it. I want to read that big fat book, Andersonville. But I like, I that. you do. You got it for like a dollar. And I was like, damn it. How'd you get that for a dollar? Um, <laughs> But like that is so interesting to me. There's lots of parts that I want to learn more about, but like this just makes me not want to. What I am going to do is look up Richmond maps after this to try and get a hold of maybe what happened where or see if I can find out where she lived or something, anything, because this is just what was the point of this other than get to like introducing more people to this woman? Yeah. Well, I am in Goodreads and I'm reading some reviews and I yeah. see here. So here's a two star review it says grab this at the library on a whim based on the title and a quick peek at the jacket. Thought the book was well researched, but it wasn't what I expected with a title like spy mistress. I expected, uh, thought or expected and thought there'd be some action and suspense. In my opinion, um, they got bogged down by trying to include too many details. The pacing dragged as a result, and the climax, if there really is one, appears to be the capture of Richmond, which doesn't occur until the end of the book. Van Loo's story is interesting, to be sure. Told differently, I think it could have been very captivating. And I think that's spot on. I think absolutely mm -hmm. Yeah, it seemed to really get bogged down by repetition, especially with the narrative. What do like four star reviews say of this? Um, in Spy Mistress, they tell a story of oh, I, I really don't like when people like give me a whole like synopsis yeah. of the book. Like I read the book. Um oh my gosh. Elizabeth Van Loo's fiance died before they could get married. I mean, this is, they're just reiterating the whole book. Yeah. So I'll, I'm not going to read that one. A four star. There are a lot of books out there about the American Civil War, both historical novels and nonfiction histories. Unlike many of the Civil War books out there, which tell grand sweeping stories of famous battles, the spy mistress established author Jennifer, blah, 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 focuses on as much smaller but just as important story. The book tells a story of, we know all this. Uh, how long is this review? I think it won't open anything. Like no. I keep going to like, oh, let me read the rest of it. I just wish people would just do it. A well-written and researched book taken place during the Civil War found way I mean these aren't really reviews these are synopsis of the Lizzie was a true hero despite the fact the book's subject and main protagonist Van Lu grated on my nerves from time to time this was my this is by far my favorite Civil War era book by Chevalrini interesting 
But all these four, honestly, all of these four star reviews, they're just synopses of the story. Like Weird. literally the rest of that whole paragraph is all just reiterating what they did. Mm-hmm. I can't stand reviews like that. Like I get like people don't, like people will come and look at a review that haven't read the book. But to me, like, I don't want a synopsis. I can read the back of the book for that. Here, a riveting piece of history written in somewhat fiction and nonfiction style. No. Uh, Lizzie, a unionist spy for a country, created a vast spy ring. No. Mm. That's That's not what I read. A memorable heroine of her time committed and determined. Lizzie also demonstrates warmth and love and a spice of witticism. Mm. I wholeheartedly enjoyed this novel. Anyone who enjoys reading about strong women in history should give it a try. I think mm. you should read it. Yeah. <laughs> and okay. Have you read Here's anything? a five-star review. Excellent. Oh. Based on a true story. Describes a detail. The life of a progressive white activist in the South during the Civil War. That's it. All right. <laughs> Have you heard anything else by the author before? Or is this your first time with her? This is my first time. Yeah, mine too. Um, and I know she's extremely popular because of her Elm Creek quilt series. Like there's tons of books in that series. And I, mm-hmm. I know she's a Wisconsin author. Um, I but, did not know that. And, okay, so at the same time, like I know she's popular, like all these things. But I don't know anyone personally who has read any of her books. And I know a lot of readers, except for one person. My friend Karen, who lives kind of close to your mom, she was in a book club for a while. And they read the book that is a sneak peek at the back of this one, Mrs. Lincoln's Rival, that this um, that Jennifer wrote. Oh, no, they were Mrs. Lincoln's Dressmaker. Yep, I see Our- that. That's got a uh, 3.5 star reading on Goodreads. So she... So Karen and I don't read the same kinds of things. We both like mysteries, though, but you know we have some overlap there. So she read this for this book club, and I said, "Oh, what did you think? I haven't read her before, but you know, I know she's very popular." And she said that they all agreed it was really flat, and they didn't know why they bothered reading it or why she bothered writing it because it was just like bleh, nothing. She said no one really liked it, but no one hated it. We just nobody cared. Right. Have been way too long. And I thought, well, then that's two books then that are like this. I'm tempted to try that Elm Creek quilt series and see if that's different because that's totally fiction. If that if people those are the only are- so of all of her books that I'm looking at here, that Elm Creek, those are the only ones that have averaged over a four yeah. star review rating. All of her other books are all like three and a half yeah out of like almost like tens of thousands of reviews Mm -hmm. so yeah but yeah she's got quite a few books yeah and like good on her for making a career as a novelist like it's not easy lots of people it's not a thing for them like i that's wonderful but i am not gonna jump i'm hoping that this is gonna be like um incarnation i thought it was gonna be like fun right fun and or have some kind of tension or be like some intrigue i was like a spy is in here like you expect a spy something to have some Mm -hmm. kind of intrigue and like some like mysterious tension thing coming up like along with it instead of just oh well we pray you make it out alive oh he was fine like uh, okay (laughs) no tension there (laughs) right and, like, you know she lives through the war. Like, you know she does. So, again, what's the tension in her ever getting found out by anybody or at any point? Because there isn't any. Because we know she survives. And if she would have gotten found out during the war, she would have been killed. I mean, yeah, they didn't mess around, you know? I just, yeah. yeah. Frustrating bummer of a book for me. I would have to agree. Mm. What so, did you think of the narrator? By the way. What do you mean? Like did you like her performance or Um Yeah, I didn't think it was bad. 
Okay. Did you listen to the one that was on Hoopla? No, I got mine for, through Audible. I had credits to use. Um, yeah. I thought she was I wonder fine. if it was the same. Yeah. Um, I thought she was fine. Like, nothing. It wasn't bad. But I found it interesting that when she would voice women characters sometimes, it was a really, really low voice. Yeah, we, re- we listened to the same one then. Yeah. I thought that was weird. It was a girl. <laughs> Not that women can't have low voices. I know I don't have a high voice. But either I was like, uh, what? Yeah, no, I think we listened to the same one because there was a couple of times where I was like, but I think it was more, it it felt like she was doing that a lot with Lizzie's voice. And I think she was trying to portray a maturity because yeah. Lizzie was, you know, in her 40s during this time. So I feel like she was just trying to like make sure that she was enlisting like a mature voice that's that's what i kind of got from it yeah that makes sense um, yeah because yeah i thought she did a fine job but it was sometimes i was like uh what <laughs> yeah right yeah yeah sometimes when i listen to audiobooks i'm like i can't stand this narrator like mm-hmm. this is terrible but yeah no i didn't fe- i didn't feel like it was too bad no it was different okay good yeah me too yeah. oh yeah, so i think I think that's really all there is to it. I mean, there, like I said before, it was hard to think of like discussion questions for this because it just felt like a historical rundown of what happened. Yeah. Um, so there wasn't really a lot for us in the way in which our group talks about books to really mm-hmm. discuss there. Um, but if you're watching this in replay, um, specifically Allie and Andy, who I know will, um, mm-hmm. Let us know what your thoughts were. I know we kind of um, got a few of those in Voxer. So if you want to share them as there um, and said as well, that's fine. Um, we'd love to hear from you on all things book club. Um, but yeah, until next time. So uh, we will have reading sprints uh, mm-hmm. next week, Tuesday, um, which is October 3rd. 3rd. Um, so we'll have our new product release at 8 p.m. And then at 8.30, we will um, do our reading sprints for the month. And that's when most of us will start our October read. Um, but you can read whatever you'd like or do whatever you'd like on those. But that's usually what Laura and I will start. Um, and then we will have the discussion, the live discussion for that book actually on halloween oh nice so, yeah so mm-hmm. i think just with what we're reading and the date mm-hmm. um i think it would be really fun if we dressed up um yep. as seen as so many of you out there aren't seen on video um mm-hmm. but you know we may have a little halloween party over yeah. here <laughs> uh, so yeah so you'll see us again on the third and then again on the 31st so if you're Mm -hmm. looking to mark your calendars uh that's when you'll see us reading sprints on the third and live discussion on the 31st um but until that time i i think i think we're all all good there yeah yeah thanks everyone for joining us and let's hope this next one is uh more universally beloved (laughs) (laughs) well have a good night everyone and again if you're watching this in replay Uh, Make sure that you um, say hello and let us know what you thought. Um, And yeah. And like I said, hey, Andy. Hi, Andy. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, Andy. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, everyone. Have a good night. Yep. Good night, everybody.